If we don't develop the heart, I, the future is Nazi Germany. Wars. Lots of power, lots of brain, no heart. If good-hearted people stop making money, what will happen to the world? To carry that consciousness, that awareness of godly presence which is meditation, who wants to bring it at a meeting level? If I am content where I am spiritually and what my purpose in life is, how do I balance shooting off as an entrepreneur and doing so much and also, you know, that being content with what you have? I don't know if I'm clear in my question. Mm -hmm. You're very clear with your question. The confusion, I'll tell you where the confusion is. You're identifying the contentment with the profession achievement and spiritual achievement to some extent. Contentment belongs to heart level. Spirituality belongs, though we use the heart, to another dimension. So we cannot compare. It's like I have fulfilled my hunger. Right? It is one level of dimension. But having quenched my thirst or satisfied my hunger, does it satisfy me emotionally? So contentment belongs to various dimensions. Right? Now, let me put it this way. Some people say mind is your enemy. Some people say ego also is your enemy. But none of these are enemies. Knife is your enemy. It depends how you use it. Right? Mind, when used properly, it's your biggest friend, your best friend. Ego, though people say it's very bad, but if you didn't have ego, you cannot progress in life either. If some sort of lethargy or some sort of false contentment comes which belongs to different level, bring it back, just try to understand which, what sort of contentment, where from it is coming. I have to keep on advancing. Similarly, you know, people think that making money is so full of greed and so full of, I mean, bad elements, but it depends on you, how you take it. If good-hearted people stop making money, what will happen to the world? It will be managed by the bad elements. So many people are not entering politics because same problem. Bad people, how can I go in? I'm such a saintly guy. They will chew me up, they will finish me. But then if good people don't enter politics, if good people don't make money, if good people say remain contented with their professionalism, only bad doctors will flourish, bad business people will flourish, bad politicians will flourish. The responsibility is on good people. So I wish you don't feel contented with all that. Be restless to serve the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can answered I, my question so I well. Give my, Thank my, you. Can I give my... Output? Oh, please, sir. Please. Because I have a different... Because I struggle with the same thing for a long time. First, I have a problem with the word spirituality. What does it mean to be spiritual? For me, spiritual is how much you care. For what do you care? If you care only for yourself, you're not that spiritual, you know. But if I care now for my clients and I care for the environment and I care for... Because the word spirit is God, God is spirit. So the more... Sp and God cares for everybody. So if I can care for everybody, I'm approaching God. I'm getting close enough. So for me, it's not the difference between Life and spirituality. You find your spirituality in your what you do. I give an example which is for me, what kind of keeps me going. I saw a restaurant that had a big sign on the wall. We will not feed you food we don't feed our children. If you love me as much as you love your children. To me it was a spiritual restaurant. <laughs> we have an executive and he tells me about the product he has, and I ask him, honestly, if you were a customer, would you buy this product? He says, 
absolutely not. It's not spiritual. He's taking care only for himself. But if you care for your customer, you're a little bit more spiritual. How far do you care? That is to me spiritual. Am I wrong or right? Because I want to define the word spiritual. Otherwise, some people believe spiritual is to go to church, pray for 20 minutes, and they go home and, and, and screw everybody. <laughs> they are very spiritual. You know, they read the book. <laughs> that is religion. Pranam Daji, Dr. Adizas. It is an extension of the question that uh, uh, doctor just asked. If we are accepting ourselves or what's happening in the organization, then how does one move towards change? And sometimes apparently logical mind tells you you don't accept things, then only you can change. But it leads to some inner resistance or conflict and the whole thing messes up. So how do we resolve this? You want to take it up? Thank you. you want to be, what is that? Go ahead. First, differentiate between self-acceptance and acceptance of the situation. They're two different things. Because if you don't accept yourself, all the energy which is limited is fighting yourself. You have no energy to fight the situation. The moment you accept yourself, I am who I am. Now I have all my energy to change the situation. Because you are you're putting it together, accepting myself means accepting the situation. Absolutely not. I accept who I am. I'm at peace with myself, that I'm not perfect. Now let's go and change the world. Acceptance and contentment. They're like, they exist on similar plane. I answer. <clears throat> with the belief that you have really accepted the situation and there is no room for a change. But is it really, have you really accepted yourself? Or the situation, or the story of contentment? If you have really, truly accepted the situation or you're the way you are, in a real authentic sense, then there is no need to change. If you are really content, truly speaking, putting your hands on your heart and say, I'm really content, then I must congratulate you. So we have to really analyze ourselves and say, am I accepting situation or myself as I am? Or am I short changing myself? Wait, wait. This is... This is different from what I was saying, because you're looking at the person, I was looking at the company, so that's different. Yes. And for that, I agree with Daji, but by adding one more word, I accept myself what I am now, but that doesn't mean I cannot improve. I know that I can improve, because if I don't accept myself, I may be losing a lot of energy fighting myself. I'm no good, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm guilty of this when there is no energy to change. I'm okay. Now, what do we do to improve? And that really is the expansion of consciousness that we talk about. Next question. Yeah. Uh, namaste, Daji. Namaste, Dr. Adhisis. I'm Anokhi, and um, yes, I'm a heartfulness yoga trainer um, since two, two to three years, and I have my own yoga classes in Europe where I teach yoga to 10 to 15 students in every class. Sometimes there's a lot of fear, self-doubt, a lot of resistance when I'm conducting my yoga events. How do I keep myself away from these doubts and keep going and keep establishing my yoga business all throughout Europe? Now, as far as fear and other things are concerned, they will always be there as long as you have the expectations. Right? So, and it's not that one should not have expectations. Because, you know, in Gita they say, Lord Krishna, karmanyava dhikaraste maha phaleshu kadachanam. Right? 
you have a right upon your action, but not there of the fruits. But in his times, when he spoke this, he meant karma as endeavor or an effort to realize the ultimate. I can work towards it, I can have my tapasya going on, but it's up to the Lord to grant me the ultimate realization. Now, if I have to go to Bombay, I have to buy a ticket, either a train ticket, or somehow I'll have to make arrangements to reach to my destination. I'll have to work, I'll need money, right? So there, the goal is in my mind. To make money is the means through which I'll be at attaining that destination, reaching that destination. That, in those days, was known as shrama. Shram means to work physically, mentally. These are the realms of shrama. When you talk of spiritual achievement, it is called karma. So meanings of the word changes. And what is so wrong about expecting a success in your material world? There is nothing wrong. But as long as you are thinking of success, expecting it, there will always be the fear. It is good, actually. I tell you why. Recently I was asked a question, I was addressing some students who are doing PhD in agriculture. And one of the professors asked me, Kamlesh Bhai, is it possible to remove the stress from the students before exams through meditation? I said, yes, definitely. But why do you want to remove the stress? Stress is good for them. If they are not stressed up, they will never study. <laughs> and if you, as a business owner of whatever, if you don't have a little bit of stress, you'll, zip, you'll relax and have, and you'll fail. So, and this is what I like to call it, the eustress. This doctor can explain what eustress means, E-U-S-T. It means it's a beneficial stress beneficial fear. So stress is good. And I wish you lots of stress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daji. Thank you. I, I, my, you touched a nerve in my case because I still live my life with fear. But two different kinds of fears. Here you think you're talking about fear of not being successful. That's one fear. In my case, I had a fear of dying. Because I'm a Holocaust survivor and I saw death with my eyes. There are two different ones. Fear from not being successful, which I also had, I, I, I resolved that. By redefining what is success. If you define success achieving a goal, you will always be a failure because the bloody goal moves, you know. As you approach, it moves. As you, there is a beautiful Brazilian song, the horizon does not exist. It moves all the time. He's successful because he mastered himself. Can I master myself? That is success. Never mind the goal there. Am I doing my best? Am I doing my best? Am I doing my best? How can I be better? How can I be better? How can I be better? More spiritual, more giving, overcome my ego, which is pretty big. This, this is success. So if you do, define it that way, you cannot be a failure because you're doing your best. The other fear of death, I overcome it by experiencing it. Because when you're experiencing, you find out it's not so bad. I discovered life after life. So I said, you know what, not so bad. And what we do for companies as well, I do with companies, oh, I have this fear, I said, okay, close your eyes, imagine you failed. Imagine you failed. So what happened? You know, not the end of the world. So that's how we say, when you experience it, you overcome it. Thank you very much. So. From what Daji said, one thing related to me, we sent a New Year card in Adizas 
May you have bigger problems next year than you had this year. <laughs> that you can But, overcome. Th uh, then the tagline below is that you can successfully overcome. Then it becomes a blessing. So a little stress is good, a little challenge is good. Okay, so who's next? If you can have some of the guests also. Yeah, sure. You want to go? In any organization, whether it is government, political or business, to manage change, grooming the team next to you or the next gen becomes very important. Can you please throw some light on how to get going grooming? Thank you. Get going with grooming means get going with grooming. See, <laughs> don't stop. Question is, is the other person ready to learn? And that you cannot help. Only thing that works to me is showing a carrot. This is, in, this is in brief. In yoga also, imagine at the end of meditation there was no peace or samadhi. Who would meditate? Find out why that person should learn to groom under your leadership. What is in it for the other person? I think this is a solid management question and I leave it to Dr. Adizis to share your ideas of how to groom the next gen, next generation of leaders within the company. How to groom? Groom means prepare them to take over your position. Oh. Usually people say they should take over when they are ready. And I say in order to be ready, they have to take over because they have to experience it. You cannot be ready reading books. You have to do it. So what I will say is the following. Let them start doing, but never make them do this way. Sales, 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 sales president. What do you know about production? Those never deliver on time. What do you know about money? They never have money. No. You prepare them this way. Let him start at the bottom, really at the bottom, to work the machines, to sweat the machines like a worker, to understand what the workers go through. Then move him to be in sales. Oh my God, it's so difficult to sell. Then move him to finance. Oh my God, there's a finance. Go like this. By the time they come to the top, They experience everything and they understand everything. Number one. Number two, I would not let my children, I did my mistake, I did my mistake, to bring your own children to take over right away. Because in my experience, maybe it's not your experience, your different culture, children want to shine. They want to show that they're capable. When they're under you, they're in your shadow. And then they start really feeling, I recommend to my clients, send your children to work somewhere else first. Let them shine there. Then when they feel, well, I can do it, you know. Now you bring them and make them go. Make them work, not observe, work. Prove yourself in every level. And if you're not capable of proving yourself, better be an owner, let somebody else manage. Who's next? Have you ever tried integrating meditation uh, or meditative practices because that uh, kind of shines the intuitive abilities and uh, inner wisdom into the training program? And uh, do you have any case study which you can share? I wish I could bring it to companies. Yes, I wish. As a matter of fact, I'm guilty. I'm not trying hard enough. Uh, in my opinion, before we start a meeting, we do calm down. I tell everybody, be on time. And maybe if, well, we go around the room and everybody has to say, how do you feel about the meeting we are going to have? Why? Because usually in the hectic world we live in, the body comes to the meeting, but the mind is somewhere else still. So I have to bring the mind where the body is 
And my way of doing it is ask, how do you feel about the meeting? Feel, how do I feel? That I have to bring my mind to where body is. Maybe by doing meditation, I can do that. So maybe the India Office of Hadiths can lead the way because we do do it, and yeah, I think it's working. It's easier for you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because this is a cultural meditation is acceptable. If I go to an American company, all peace, you know, all these gringos, let's meditate. No, no, no. I, I disagree with you. Oh, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you why. People have this wrong impression that the Indian people are easily susceptible to meditation. No. <laughs> they like to go easy way. They have a murti or a statue, do namaskaram, recite one or two mantras or slokas. God is where he is and he is into business. <laughs> And to carry that consciousness, that awareness of godly presence, which is meditation, who wants to bring it at meeting level? How many are interested in that? But our, since you are all inclined towards meditation, try it and see, because years of business that I have done also as a student and also as a family person and also now as the president of Sri Ramchandra Mission, I get guided from within. As a student, I knew exactly what to read, what to skip, and I was able to understand things faster and in depth. So whenever there is a meeting, meditate, not half hour or one hour, at least for five minutes, close your eyes, let them revisit, visit and revisit the agenda of the meeting. So all are very clear why they were called for and what to expect from the meeting. If you like, you can recite the agenda of the meeting and then let all meditate, pause, and then you begin the meeting. Master. Sir. What is the minimum time of acceptable meditation? Because, uh, by the way, I'm really guilty. I would like to, I'm going to try. But if I know, I'm thinking to myself, go to the American company. They're all in a P mode. They're everybody there watching their iPhone, everybody. Let's do a half an hour meditation. Not I'm out. What is the minimum that is acceptable? Well, try five minutes to start with. Five minutes. That I can do. For the meeting. No, that I can do. That I can do. But I have to insist that they all come on time. Because, they, you know, we start, somebody arrives. Somebody it's arrives. It's okay. Somebody. They will miss out. And then you will understand that, look, those who are already present and those who underwent these five minutes of introspection, they were better off at responding and understanding the meeting. To the others, it will look too foreign and they will look so foolish. How do, you, how do I develop self-discipline to do it every day? <laughs> because I have so many things to do, my head is rushing so much, I skip too many times. And the evening, I'm so tired not to do cleaning. You go to sleep. I go to sleep. <laughs> it's okay. How, how do you, how, really, I really would love to develop that self-discipline, which I don't have in anything. You can see, I have no discipline in anything. What do you do? How do you develop self-discipline? You've got to love it first. Loving? Love it. You've got to love it. Now it's a catch-22 situation, you see. <laughs> to me, more than a practice, what is most important is the attitude one develops towards the practice. Even if you do it five minutes, it doesn't really matter. But that longing, that restlessness, that craving that one must have in the heart, that's what matters. Really. Revisit your romantic days of teenage times. You dated your friend and you're waiting at the theater and if you're a boy, you would reach there one hour before the girl would come there. Right? 
so much of restlessness to see your beloved. One hour before, you'll be there at the theater. And five minutes before that, the world will end. Keeps on phoning, where are you, where are you, will she come? And then settles down, see. Restlessness. And when you have tremendous restlessness and you close your eyes, you'll be transported to the highest level of condition in less than two minutes. Then you won't have to meditate for one hour. So, to me, how you spend the rest of your day, your 23 hours, that will decide your one hour of practice, the quality of practice, the attitude. So quality more than quantity. I want to say something that has been impressed with you, Daji. And I've been watching you all the time. You are so, what, what works? All your recommendations are not dogmatic. Has to be half an hour because the book says half an hour. You said, start with five minutes. Mutual trust and respect and love. Start with mutual trust and respect. You're very what works in the right direction. And I think if we can follow that, that's a great instruction. Because yeah. some people are A's, you know. They follow the manual, although they're going against the wall. What works in the right direction? Because some of us, what works in the wrong direction. No, no, no. What works in the right direction. Flexibility. So I thank you. Thank you. Something to learn. So, yeah, sure. Rahul? So why is that we are seeing uh, so many Indians rising up the corporate leadership ladder in globally? Is it coincidental or can there be anything contextual also? I have a problem with understanding. He and says why so many, how why so many Indians are... I what? why so many Indians are leading in the corporate world all across the globe. For the same reason why so many women are leading now many corporations. And the common denominator is I. I. I think the whole developed world, the developed world, P is not so important anymore. Because we have so much abundance. What is more important now, what's growing in importance, is I. That's why women are taking over the world. We men are PE. Women, for generations, have to keep the family together. They're I. And we are falling apart. So women have the capability to listen, to integrate. That's why they're coming up. Same thing with Indians. Indians have a lot of eye. Anywhere in the world, if you drive like you drive here, you kill each other. Here, they smile, keep going, you know. You have a lot of eye. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So just a second. I want to continue a little bit. It's very important. That's why I, want, I break it down. Okay? If we look at the development of humanity, we started as chimpanzees. The strongest chimpanzee was a leader. Then we became a nomadic society. <coughs> the strongest hunter was a leader. Then we became an agricultural society. The one with the most cows and the most sheep or whatever was the leader. What is the common denominator? Muscle, power, dominance. Yes? Then came the Industrial Revolution. What came into the play? The brain. Now you have to plan and to budget and to hire and to fire and supply chain. Industrial society is power and brain. Now we live in a post-industrial society. 
Power is not so important muscles. Let the Chinese do the work, you know. Let the Indians do the work, you know. Brain. The biggest company, transportation company in America, does not have one car, no muscle. Computer information, what is it called? Uber. The biggest hotel in the world does not have one hotel, Airbnb. What do they have? Computer information, all brain. Israel, 63% of Israel desert. No oil, no nothing, desert. What do they have? Brain. The brain is on its way out, my friends. Artificial intelligence, quantum computers. So what is the future? My dear friend, heart. If we don't develop, listen to me, I'm really kind of emotional about it. That's why I'm here. If we don't develop the heart, I, the future is Nazi Germany. Worse. Lots of power, lots of brain, no heart. Now with nuclear bombs and no heart, we are cooked. Unless we develop the heart. That's why heart heartfulness has a role, my friends. I see too many Indians, I don't see enough Westerners. I want to see more Westerners. I want to see more people here, leaders of the world coming here. We don't have much time lost. We have to develop the heart as fast as possible or we are cooked. And what is heart? I. That's why People that have I are coming up because people say, that's what we need, that's what we need. People realizing it, that's what we need. But we need to feed it. We need to nourish it. We have to develop it. Because I is very vulnerable. P kills it in no time. Lovely. Okay. Apart from a deep, deep gratitude to Dr. Jesus for having taken time out from a personal visit, and you did it with all heart. So early it was how much can doctor, how many hours can he put, and we were saying maybe two hours. And, but when he came here, the environment transformation, he says, I want to do all of it. And then we said, okay, <laughs> let's see how it goes. And uh, Daji, thank you very much. He has taken time out from other things that he is doing, and there's a there's a lot of pressure on his time, but he wanted generally to be with all of you. Thank you very much, sir.